Hi guys, it's Nick here from Unique Life Design. This morning I will try to give you 10 types of Trachycarpus um, palms that you can use in a cold climate. These are the ones that we are having in our garden. So basically it will be a bit of a light-hearted look at them, their characteristics, how can you use them. So yeah, let's get going. The first one is the undisputed king of the cold climate tropical gardens. This is the Trachycarpus fortunae. Ta-da! So you can see our biggest one here. We have two others. So you, it can be found pretty much everywhere. It's extremely hardy, uh, very adaptable. So, yeah, there is a reason why it's the most popular one. It's also known as a windmill palm. Different names as well, I've seen. But, yeah, this is the Trachycarpus fortunae. I'll just go a little bit closer. Bigger leaves. Not that stiff. No spines. kind of a relief, hairy trunk, as most have trachycarpuses, not all of them though I guess, quite hairy, some people like to actually um, strip them of this hair, because they do like the look, I don't really like the look, but I'm toying with the idea when one of the smaller ones grow up, to kind of strip it down to see uh, well it will be looking different it does look different so it's worth trying probably okay the next one is its close cousin the pretender to the throne according to some uh, Trachycarpus Wagnerianus Wagner's palm also known so it's pretty much the same species but it's a variant which has smaller and much stiffer leaves which are much more wind resistant other than that it's still fast growing like the other one and it's very beautiful as well so yeah, that's the second type of Trachycarpus in our garden. This one we bought as a very small specimen and look at it in less than 10 years, maybe 9 years or so. It's now looking quite, quite nice and it's continuing to grow. We talked about the king, we talked about <laughs> the pretender to the throne and no court would be complete without a little prince. So that's Trachycarpus princeps. Uh, unfortunately, it's still too small to have its characteristic blue shine, which will come in time, I do believe. But yeah, it's uh, very rare and not very common palm, but it's extremely beautiful. So, I will try to show you for this now. There it is. That's the little prince, Trachycarpus princeps. There will be some other princes. I don't think it's next in line to the throne, because by the presence of offspring indicates some bigger princes somewhere. <laughs> so yeah, but we do have a little prince growing in our garden. The next one I want to show you is the fastest grower, the fastest palm in the Trachycarpus family, Trachycarpus nova. You could call it a rising star in the court, <laughs> as Trachycarpus is like the royal family of cold hardy palms. So probably this would be the first minister or something that has 
because it's grown so much so quick so as you can see this one has considerable size and we took it as a small one and it hasn't been with us that long probably half the time of the Trichicarpus Vignerianus starting from the same starting point and it's nearly nearly not much but quite close to the same to the same height as the Trichicarpus Vignerianus so that comes to show you that it is a very fast growing plant for a palm in cold climate so yeah one I would definitely recommend to people now here we have Trachycarpus princeps new form which many believe to be a hybrid between Trachycarpus nova and Trachycarpus princeps so it's only getting the bluish or whitish color under on underneath on the leaves it's not very visible now because of the rains and it's not in the sun at the moment it's not the best time probably to look at it but it does show the white color underneath the leaves let me try and find it for you get it from here yep you can probably see it better here so that's the one we have it took a while to get going as Trichicarpus principis generally considered to not be very fast one but it has got going at the end yep so now it's beginning beginning to make the right impression so again another one I do recommend all of them actually because <laughs> they are all lovely in their own way but yeah it has proven to be tolerant to quite a bit of shade for myself it's definitely as most of the others are not as uh, as cold hardy as the Trichicarpus fortunae but still it will be more than enough for a lot of places okay the next one I want to show you is Trachycarpus monipur or Urkulensis it's the exotic cousin in the family Indian fan palm seen some far away places apparently I do like it a lot it's not as it doesn't seem to be as hairy as, as the other and also they have this characteristic underside of the leaves which is quite blue one of the peculiar things about this one is that it starts to grow sideways rather than upwards at the beginning so i'll try and show you if you can see it let me see so as you can see where it starts here and it starts creeping 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 and then at some point start start growing start growing and then you get these beautiful leaves I have been told that as it grows bigger the leaves will be less stiff and more liable to wind damage I have not noticed that as yet maybe it's not big enough so I will keep you updated on this one but it's another beauty as you can see yourself I believe talking about far away places there is a member of the family that has been banished and sent in exile I believe some would say that he's been even as far as Mars so a Martian in a way <laughs> or maybe somewhere up in the mountains in the highest mountains in the world so 
Fittingly, this is called Trachycarpus Martianus Nepal. So, let me try and show you. Again, it is placed in a quite shady space in our garden, but it hasn't stopped it from growing. It hasn't been fast, but it has been steady picking up speed one of the characteristics and the beauty of this one is as you can see quite circular form quite circular shape of the leaves I'm not sure that stays the same as it matures but in young plants apparently it's a feature so I really quite enjoyed seeing it if you decide to grow it I'm sure you will too now we are getting to two hybrids which indicate improper relations within the family but let's face it it's not unheard of in royal families so this is Trechicarpus uh, Wagnerianus crossed with Princeps so yeah, they're still small, they're very very rare, in fact, till recently I haven't seen one, but we managed to get it now, and I do believe it, if it keeps, if it can get the stiff leaves, the smaller leaves, wind resistant leaves of its Princeps, Princeps ancestor, and the blue color, hopefully, um, well, actually, Vagnerianus ancestor is having the stiff leaves and the blue color from the princeps, it will be looking quite spectacular. We live in hope and we will keep you updated. The other one I want to show you, quite nearby, so I'm not gonna be switching off, is another hybrid. It's the Hikapus. Wagnerianus crossed with the Hikarpus Nanus. Nanus is believed to be the smallest type of Trechicarpus, almost trunkless. So this is gonna be quite interesting. Again. I believe it will be much smaller pound, so you never know with hybrids. And hopefully with stiff leaves, and it will have quite unique look. So we will keep watching it, we will keep taking care of it, and hopefully we will be rewarded with some real beauty here. Okay. The last type of Trichicarpus we have in our garden is a one that is the real illegitimate offspring a proper b dot start uh, it was bold under the name trichicarpus other side because the quite knowledgeable person who was selling it believed it's a different species to anything that has been described and it has been growing quite steadily and nicely here. Again, quite a bit of shade where it is. It doesn't seem to affect it negatively. Uh, I can see the leaves. Maybe it's because it's still juvenile, but the leaves are not split as some others are. So it's looking quite different already. I'm beginning to notice a hint of white underside of the leaves. So, I'll be keeping an eye on this one too, but I do believe it's going to be something quite interesting. So, I hope you enjoyed this <laughs> light-hearted take. It's not as informative as it could have been, for sure, but sometimes people don't need too much information. They just need to hear the name, get them, decide if they want it, 
check a few facts about them, if they're suitable for where they are, and take the plunge and try to grow it. So I will list the names in the description. So no worries if you couldn't understand my thick accent. <laughs> so no problem about that. Okay guys, speak to you soon.